Hello and welcome to the Tribal Review Room. I am Dakota Bryce. On this episode, we go behind the scenes of the upcoming one-act plays, meeting the cast and crew and seeing the spectacle unfold. I'm Jesse Garino. Later on this episode, we will take a look at the legacy the senior soccer players have left on the program. Get ready, Tribal Review Red starts now. The One Acts are rehearsing in preparation for their upcoming performance. Haley Rawson ha caught up with the cast and crew of In Loving Memory of a Letter and files this report. Truth. Every time I pick Dare, it's weird or nasty. Allie Hall is getting the chance to direct her own One Act in Loving Memory of a Letter. Okay, basically, my One Act is a Romeo and Juliet scenario, but one of them is already dead and there's a love triangle. Of the Sandy. Uh, Sandy. Alex Steele likes getting to play the lead Sandy. So Sandy. True. My name is Alex Steele and I'm in Ali Halla's one act in loving memory of a letter. And my favorite part about being Sandy is that she dies. Each director gets an assistant from the technical production class. We mostly do lights and sound, like whatever lights they want in their set, and then their sound of like their mics and stuff. I remember the first time I ever met him. The one acts will run from January 14th through the 17th. Tickets will be $5. Sandy? Make sure you come and support all eight one acts. From Travel Review Red, I'm Haley Rawson. Elizabeth Hupp is busy preparing her acts for her produce production of The Princess and the Pea. Cheyenne Oaks caught up with the cast and fills us in on what we can expect. Why not decide? Just be like, oh. Uh. Uh, or, uh, uh, director of the one act play Princess and the Pea, Elizabeth Huff has chosen this play because it's a cute old story. Partially because it's an old story and I really, really enjoyed um, the storyline of it and it's a very cute story and I'm super into romance. Most of my friends know that. Um, and another reason why was because we had to stay to a specific um, theme whenever we were picking ours. We had to have little, uh, little to none characters. Uh, and then um, it had to be 30 minutes. So that was kind of hard when we were picking ours. So yeah, those were the guidelines. For the audiences and your legs, like whether you're facing this way, this leg, the one that's farthest on the outside is always going to be back. So pretend you're facing this way, you're not going to want to be like this. Freshman Douglas McIntosh plays Prince in the one act play and enjoys it. Nice, I guess. Cut that out. What's going on, son? They're right, mother. I just want to be left alone. Left alone? Left alone? Senior Emily Crozier plays the queen and she's extremely excited for the upcoming. Um, I'm super excited. I enjoy getting to be uh, the ruler over everybody. <laughs> the one act plays will be premiering in January. For Travel Review Red, this is Cheyenne Oaks. Thanks, Cheyenne. The one act's coverage continues with the look at The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Caleb Winslow visited with director Trent Smith to see what we can expect from this play. Trent Smith is one of the directors of the one act plays. He chose The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Alright, um, I chose Sleepy Hollow for my play and I chose it because I've always kind of been into like, you know, creepy stories and so I like that aspect of it and um, I believe there's a new TV show out with like a Headless Horseman theme and so I thought that that would be a good choice to have something that's uh, popular and fresh on everyone's mind right now. There are nine cast members in the play. Herman Tapasoa is one of them. The person I'm playing is Braun uh, in this theatrical performance. It's going to be awesome. Um, basically how I'm preparing myself is I have to basically be a total rebel, um, which I kind of am, at least I think I am. So I have to be this total rebel and this jerk basically, and I'm kind of like the hot flashy thing, and uh, I'm basically just like a muscle man. And so that's my character. He's a jerk and he's rude. 
This play will last from half hour to 45 minutes. Sean Smith is the lead role. I'm the main character, Ichabod Crane, who's a school teacher who moves to a town and gets um, kind of bullied and harassed by some people. Um, there's this myth going around about uh, like a Sleepy Hollow type character and a ghost, if you will, and he doesn't believe it. And towards the end of the story, he starts to get creeped out, and the myth becomes, he realizes it's, it's real, and uh, it starts to scare him. Come see Sleepy Hollow this January. I'm Caleb Winslow, reporting for Trial Review Red. Thanks, Caleb. The senior soccer players played their last season here at Fort. Caitlin Boatwright fills us in on their last three years of accomplishments. This year's seniors are sad about leaving, but Pierre Casaraghi is proud of how strong and well they have played in high school. I feel very honored to be a part of this 2014 class. We've matured in this past four years, even though I've only played two out of four years. And two out of four years I've played, we won conference and Morberly championships. And I feel very pleased to be a part of this you know, Florida State family. And, I'm very proud of our boys and our program. The boys have learned throughout the years and used what they learned on the field. And David Hankins feels they are very successful. Well, it was my senior year, so it was kind of sad to see it all go away. But we had a pr pretty successful season, 16 and 7, uh, runners up in the district, co-conference champs with Staley. This year has been a fantastic year for the Fort soccer team. The seniors this year have worked hard to get where they are. Ray Tapino is impressed with this year's team. I think the Ford team did really well this year. I think we have a lot of young guys that came out and really improved this year, and I think it should be a good team next year. Uh, but, yeah, we did pretty well this year. Ford's boys senior soccer players have had an amazing and unforgettable season. They have broken six records, won 75% of their games, and won two Moverly tournaments. This is Caitlin Boatwright reporting live for Tribal Review Red. That's it for today's show. Coming up on our next episode, we will tell you about the Activities Director, Brendan Hart's recent reward. We'll also have a report about how snow days are dealt with in our school, so stay warm, Indians, and have a great day.